Hello, this is Virtualis the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. Today I won in 8 moves with the Vienna Gambit. When I have an opponent who accepts the Vienna Gambit, I'm always excited as it potentially leads to some very fun lines. For me. Today I played one of these lines and it's the second time I've managed to spring this trap. The first time was during a tournament last year, and I created a video on that game where I managed to get a mythical 100% accuracy rating according to chess.com's algorithm. Please enjoy! Alright, so very quick look at the review first, and as you can see, um, practically 100%, so brilliant, great move, best moves, and book moves. Now the opponent uh, made some uh, a mistake and a blunder, and as we can see, uh, we will see how this trap launches. And there were only eight moves uh, each in this game before the opponent uh, resigned. Let's have a look at the trap now uh, in the analysis. I played with the white pieces, uh, obviously, as I play the Vienna. So e4, e5, knight c3, the beginning of the Vienna game. Uh, and the opponent plays uh, knight f6, which is also known as the Folkbier defense. Uh, and this now allows for the Vienna gambit with f4. Uh, as I've uh, so shown before, best response is immediately with d5, which probably is not the most intuitive move if you're not familiar with the Vienna Gambit, and every now and then, um, less so as you go up in the ratings, but um, every now and then you, I'll meet an opponent who's not familiar with the Vienna Gambit, and so accepts the Gambit. And I'm usually very excited when this happens, as once the opponent accepts the Gambit, you now have e5. And e5 causes a big problem for the opponent with this knight. It's under threat. These are the squares, so on the board, every single one of those squares is uh, defended by one of my pieces, uh, and so it looks like that the opponent must withdraw their knight. However, this is where potentially some of the biases of um, of uh, so being maybe a player that's a little bit beyond right at the beginner, maybe uh, potentially you know at the intermediate level, where some of these intuitions are actually bad for you. Because I can imagine um, for a beginner, they might think, "Oh, there's nothing I can do about this. I must just withdraw," which is in fact the best move. Uh, not uncommonly, you will see Queen E7, uh, and the idea is they'll try to pin the pawn to my king, meaning that their knight can stay in that position. The best response to that is very simply uh, queen e2. Uh, basically, if they capture, I capture back, so that doesn't make sense. And of course, that knight is still straight up under threat because I'm attacking the knight. If they don't do something about it, I will capture it. Uh, and then their queen is basically pinned. Um, so is my queen. So we will force a trade of queens. Uh, and then I will capture back uh, basically with development. So, so, it's, uh, so this is already bad. And you can see it's a plus 2.4, about plus 2.4 for the opponent. Now my opponent here sort of realizes that that knight, uh, there is no defending that knight, so they bring the knight back, uh, which is the best move. For me, the most important thing is to be careful of queen h4 with check, and the best way to defend against that is simply to play knight uh, f3, uh, now defending the h4 square. So that is no longer possible um, for the uh, for the opponent and also you know, stops that pawn advance as well. Here very commonly the opponent feels that they have to you know, bring on an extra attacker uh, to that pawn and so they play d6, a very very natural move. Now I had a look at, uh, it's quite interesting, I had a look at um, the Lee Chess community database and in fact at this position, at this position where the opponent plays their queen, uh, white wins 75% of the game. And by the time we get to uh, this position, um, so d6, and that now allows for uh, knight d5, 
So basically attacking the queen and also attacking the c7 square. So this is a general idea from the Vienna, not just specific to this trap, but a general idea from the Vienna. By the time we reach this position, uh, white wins 90% of the games, which shows you how absolutely devastating this position is. So it looks almost plus, uh, almost plus eight by this position. So it's absolutely devastating. Um, now the opponent, and we'll see why it's such a trap. Now the opponent here almost has nowhere good to go. Now they decide to play queen d8. But you will see something very interesting. According to Stockfish, uh, the best response was actually just playing a knight move. Which basically means in this position, uh, Stockfish reckons that that is the best move. Uh, so the best position is allowing white to capture the queen. This is how absolutely dreadful this position is for black. So basically, you have to give up the queen, just develop your pieces, except that the queen is lost. That is how absolutely uh, problematic this position is for black. Uh, very commonly, uh, the opponent will try to do something to protect that pawn, and where and this is where the trap springs. So here's a brilliant move. So. Uh, knight to capture the c7 pawn anyway with comes with check. Now the opponent actually resigned uh, on this move uh, after this move, so at move eight. And the reason why it is so strong is that if the opponent captures, so now the natural thing is to capture, I suppose, uh, then you have capture back now with check. Uh, and you know the opponent can potentially they could choose to block, uh, but if they choose to do that the queen is lost. Or they can block with the queen, the queen is lost. So either way, the queen is lost in this position. So absolutely, absolutely devastating uh, position, uh, and hence that's why it's a brilliant uh, a brilliant move. I think the opponent sort of did a little bit of a calculation, realized that pretty much all was lost, um, and so they sort of uh, opted to resign at this part of the game. But this is absolutely a, a fantastic, uh, fantastic trap. Now, once the opponent accepts the Vienna Gambit, very often uh, these ideas come out. So uh, they don't want to retreat their knight, so they bring out the queen uh, to try to pin. You unpin with your own queen. Uh, they're forced to move their knight out of the way, block the potential uh, sort of a uh, queen move with check. Uh, very often they will want to do something about that pawn, so they'll play uh, so they'll play um, d6 and then the knight goes here uh, with an attack uh, and basically um, you know this trap is basically sprung and pretty much the opponent is lost. As I said, once once we get to the knight in that position, 90% of the time white wins. So great game, GG. I've mentioned this many times on previous videos, and I'll repeat it again. The player with the black pieces should never accept the Vienna Gambit by capturing the pawn on f4. There is only one correct response, d5, which enters the Vienna game main line. At the beginner intermediate level, most people don't know this, as the Vienna game isn't a common opening. For the opponent who falls for the lure of accepting the gambit, the chain of intuitive human moves afterwards allows for this devastating and brilliant trap where they are basically completely lost by move 8. I hope you found this game interesting, and thanks for watching!